All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News. A major day in the Valorant world yesterday with mega nerfs coming through for Cypher and Viper in professional play. Lots of reaction from the pros of this one, certainly to do with, once again, the timing of it. Frustrations once again raised, not only of the changes themselves, but of when they will be implemented and exactly what that means for the team's preparation for these major events to come. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. This series, by the way, has not yet happened. It's tomorrow that Na'Vi play Fnatic and and effectively the winner makes it to playoffs the loser may well not depending on the results elsewhere now an update for you guys on this one so jh who we saw yesterday who was um effectively implicated in this match fixing scandal that challenges uh, malaysia singapore they come out and say that yeah this guy's been provisionally suspended because we think that he's been match fixing he then says what are you talking about these allegations are hurting my rep at least talk to me about it first which was very interesting and um then they actually come out to say the following we acknowledge his recent statement regarding the professional suspension or the provisional suspension imposed by Riot Games. We understand the concern and frustration this situation has caused. First of all, we want to emphasize the decision to issue a provisional suspension was based on information provided to us by Riot Games, the governing body overseeing the Valorant competitive scene as uh, TGC, the company organizing the tournament on behalf of Riot. We are committed to upholding the integrity of competitive play, etc, etc. Going on to say, he's been given 48 hours to respond to these allegations as per standard tournament procedure. We encourage him to cooperate fully with the investigation to ensure a fair and transparent resolution to this matter. We understand the potential impact that such allegations can have on an individual's reputation and we assure him in the community that due process will be followed to ascertain the facts. We appreciate the community's patience and understanding as we navigate through the situation. We remain committed to fostering a competitive environment built on integrity and fairness. So interesting, right, that they hadn't talked to him before this. They'd just done the announcement publicly and then he was like, hey, what do you mean? And they were like, oh yeah, you've got 48 hours to respond, I guess in private, to these allegations, but um, they hadn't reached out to him until he tweeted out and said, hey, they haven't even talked to me about this. Then they got in contact. Like, is that the point where the 48 hours begin? Or do they just like expect him to respond anyway within 48 hours or like, without knowing the rules? I don't know, a bit of a strange one. The main question is though, what exactly has he been implicated for? And uh, Fudge here, James Fudge says for the esports advocates that this suspension is actually on suspicion of max fixing, but in relation to betting on himself while at NIP in 2023. So this always causes debate here because in the fighting world, you can bet on yourself and that's fine. And you might think, well, if you're betting on yourself, what's the problem, right? And maybe there is an argument to be made for that. Now, obviously, if you're betting on the other team to win and you're playing in the game, you know, it, obviously that doesn't fly. But players in various sports have bet on themselves to win and, you know, believing they're going to do it. And, you know, fair enough. But they actually lost the game. I'm pretty sure that he lost the game in question here. So, yeah, there was probably nothing in it. But... The rule is the rule, and the rule is that you can't bet on yourself in most professional sports, and the reasons why I guess I'll explain in a second. This is the rule according to, as we saw here, that he breaks in the code of conduct. Gambling on the outcome of a tournament match or game is um, basically prohibited, and you're not allowed to do so in any particular circumstance. There was also discussion, though, that this code of conduct only came into effect recently, like the start of this year, and maybe there's an argument that if the self-bet was from last year, then he didn't break the rules at the time. And in retrospect, it might be unfair to penalise him as a result. So maybe there's an argument that he can potentially make on that one. But basically the reason why you're not allowed to do this, or even, you know, coaches, they can't bet on their own teams to win or to lose, obviously. But even to win if you're a coach, because it's likely that players involved or coaches involved with the team have more information on the match than we do from a public perspective. They scrim against other teams. They hear talk behind the scenes on who is struggling, who is not, that we don't necessarily hear from the public side. They have their own understanding of the way that teams match up. So the reality is that players and coaches and staff of teams have more information with regard to the matches being played than the public do, and therefore it's an unfair advantage for them to bet on a game. Like, you know, this guy knows for whatever reason that like he just tends to slam this team and he thinks that and therefore the odds that the public are getting are different maybe in the mind of the players it's just various things like that that mean that it's just not done it shouldn't be done and players should be smart enough to know this i would say but apparently that's what's happening here so we'll see if there's any update on it but let's talk about the changes from the valorant side this as well is kind of interesting benji fishy and boo versus can kang and nobody two versus two the belief is that possibly valorant are going to implement here like a wing 
wingman style game mode, right? In Counter-Strike, there's a 2v2 game mode called wingman. Apparently, they may introduce that to Valorant as well. That's been what the speculation has been on this topic anyway. So whether that's true, time will tell. But let's talk about the patch notes because Viper and Cypher both nerfed. Viper heavily so, Cypher somewhat so at a pretty interesting timing. So patch 8.08, the patch drops, Cypher, the following has happened. The trap wire, rearm time increased to 1 to 2, the slow on the trap wire reduced 2 to 1.25. So pretty big deal, not going to kill Cypher, I don't think. This one again is strange. I mean, again, it's one of these changes that is, um, you know, noob friendly is how people would describe it. Enemies can now hear looping audio when they are actively being watched by the Cypher from within the spy cam. So just another indication for the, you know, players in question that they're potentially getting watched. So maybe it's a small deal that isn't going to change the game massively, but it's just one of those changes that players will look at and think, well, is that really necessary? Does it lower the skill gap? Possibly, yes. And Cypher, a pretty considerable nerf, but Viper has arguably been gutted. We know that Viper highly used in the present meta, but yeah, this is pretty severe. Toxic screen and poison cloud. Max uptime on each smoke is now gone from 15 down to 12. The minimum fuel gone to 20 to 30%, which is a pretty big deal, honestly. Cooldown on reactivating smokes has now been reduced, though, from 8 down to 5. The poison cloud can now only be picked up during the buy phase. And then the snake bite. This is honestly a, a pretty mega one, like a really mega mega one, I would say, because, you know, the snake bite, the molly, very effective, especially for lineups and stuff like this. Charges, you now only get one. You can't even have two snake bites anymore. Prices increase from 200 up to 300. The duration is slightly more, but, um, you know, it's more expensive and you only get one. So that is a considerable across the board change there to Viper. And uh, yeah, as we see here from Cloud9, Viper players after the nerves, it's, um, it ain't looking so good, right? I mean, here we are, straight back to the Mackie D's. So obviously there's talk here about the changes themselves and whether they're good or bad, but I think the main main discussion often for the pros here is about the timing, right? Because there's so many things you can change in Valorant, such as the agent meta, and when the decisions are made is often, you know, unfair on some of the team. Even a point here from KC's H on the Masters Madrid teams, because they went to Masters Madrid and then the patch, you know, there was an update. The teams that were at home, they got to prepare for the upcoming games while those teams at the Masters events, they played on the old situation. And by the time they came back, they were severely under practice compared to anybody else. And he says it's the same thing for teams that qualified to Shanghai. Even I think Zekin has made this point that it might even be better to not qualify to Shanghai, not even go to Masters, because then you're in a better position, you're better prepared for the run into the World Championship. So, you know, this is the point really on teams that can be very good, but they are getting dealt a bad hand by Riot Games on the timing of some of these changes. But um, of course, we can also talk about the Viper changes themselves, whether they were fair or not, and also what is coming next here. As FNS says, I'd be devastated about these Viper changes if I wasn't already one of one on Jet or Rays, and who knows what's going to happen there going forward. Kaplan says, pretty excited to see some aggressive buffs and nerfs. Figuring out meta changes is fun, but I'm disappointed with the Cypher Cam nerf. Hidden cams were interesting to play against. Seems like this change just removes a lot of the ability's depth, which yeah, I think is absolutely on the money. And I know that um, Dapper kind of said the same thing. He was like, wow, nice job, guys. And um, yeah, the spy cam change has got to be the most pandering to casual players thing that I've ever seen. Literally added a Wraith passive at every Valorant character to nerf this guy. And, um, you know, we get this as well from Zekin because this was a tweet here from Coleman Parr, product manager on Valorant Gameplay, who, um, you know, then says, we've got more changes stated for after Masters 2 in June but it's a constantly ongoing process. So there's some big changes they feel like they're, you know, coming as well. They say that, well, the Viper change, the Cypher change might not be too disruptive. Presumably, they're going to be active for Shanghai. I imagine for the playoffs, these, um, you know, what we see now is going to be the meta. But for Shanghai, potentially the Viper and the Cypher nerf will come into play there. And then afterwards, then they might make some other changes. They're saying that they've got, you know, more changes slated for after Masters 2 in June. And Zekin saying, yeah, maybe they're going to nerf Raze, which I wouldn't be surprised at, right? Raze is kind of dominant right now in the meta. Zekin saying, yeah, maybe after Shanghai, they're going to nerf Raze and they're going to put us all back to square one. So um, yeah, most of the pros are not happy about this. Even if the patch itself is not bad, I mean, they've kind of killed Viper, I would say. And maybe the nerfs and buffs are somewhat justified, but I think the point is for the pros that again on the timing, it's, um, it's just frustrating for the guys to deal with the way the season is formatted and major changes like this.
this being made at this type of time benefits some, hurts others. Zekin says, oh yeah, the update's really good. And uh, yeah, just gave Ryan $100, right? I love Valorant. So clearly, He's not so happy with the situation here. The other talking point, though, was no map wall changes. I think that a major patch update like this, people might have expected something. I wonder if it's going to happen after Masters, actually, I, after Shanghai. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that occurs. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll see whether Pearl makes a return, whether Fracture could make a return into play. Of course, whether Haven makes a return into play as well. But, yeah, for now, zero map pool changes, which came as slightly a bit of a surprise. You know, the Centaurs even obviously put this out as well. They were keen to see some changes there. The fact that Breeze and Icebox are still in the rotation, people aren't necessarily so happy about, right? But over the coming days, we are going to see some big games going down. As I say, EMEA kicks off again today. The big match, I believe, is tomorrow between Na'Vi and Fnatic, really. But also we have this one, Loud versus G2. It's, um, you know, it's not so complicated here. If Loud win, Loud qualifies. If G2 wins, then EG qualifies through that group. So that's pretty straightforward. But um, it's uh, less straightforward when it comes down to the Sentinel situation, as we talked about yesterday. But very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. In his replies to all these tweets, he's like, I can't believe you guys can even be mad at me when Ye was the one trying to bribe our head coach with $10,000 to bench me. I'm like, yo, brother, you should have kept that in the drafts. If anything, I don't care how fucking big a lunatic uh, Ye is. This guy was trying to pay $10,000 to get you off the team, brother. You truly must have been ass. <laughs> like, you must have been detrimental <laughs> no. that this guy was willing to pay $10,000 just to not play with you. <laughs>